Good morning, folks. We're going to first quickly update that sundiving comet from yesterday. It tracked in on a solid survival trajectory, but the solar wind from the southern coronal holes destroyed him upon approach. He's gone. As you watch the next large plasma filament crest over the northeastern limb into view, know that the sun and earth have both been relatively calm the last couple of days, but that we expect that to change in a big way starting today. Weather should kick up first, with the earthquakes waiting around to jump in as well, but we will start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and find the lesser likely sphere to get active. Tiny piece of the southern filament structure released, but it is in no way major. Earth-facing quiet continues dominating the disk as the solar flaring remains just in B range only. And while larger flares are definitively not expected, a C flare or two may actually be expected from the newly presented active region top left. It has enough umbras that one modest X-ray event probably wouldn't shock anyone. The solar wind has calmed further, density and plasma speed leveling out, and Earth's magnetic shield is doing just fine this morning. However, we expect impact from a coronal hole stream and associated sector boundaries as early as Thursday night. Dark coronal holes here would be responsible for the streams that will cause those disruptions at Earth. However, the Earth may get active before that. They face Earth tonight, which means that the non-solar wind elements of geo-effectiveness can begin. Our disaster app testing phase is already allowing for these analyses. Corona hole score jumped up 50% overnight as the openings approach center longitudes, even picking up the far southern opening now. It has been 10 days since Ecuador's magnitude 7.8 disaster, and since then, our only magnitude 6 rumbles were aftershocks. We are well below average between these coronal holes, but hey, expect that to end very soon. Top news. This might look familiar, but I promise it's not. It is a new protoplanetary disk image around a different star, and it's got a gap at the Earth distance. They think a 1AU sphere will someday exist there. And just as important, why do all these proto-disks look exactly the same? Never mind, moving on. The dust and wind storm that whacked Arizona yesterday, and which is literally shaking the mobile observatory in Albuquerque as I produce this morning's news, is resulting from the convergence line extending south off this powerful Earth spot low in the central U.S. As noted yesterday, tonight is the return of tornadoes, and folks, it is looking very bad. Lives are at risk tonight, and if we get out of this without a casualty, it'll be amazing. The low will tighten and extend its convergence due south and drop that bad weather right in the middle of the country. Now that's our top weather story, but if you pull the wind map, you really don't need any help. The wind patterns aren't random. They're entirely dictated by the pressure, the earth spots, wrapping the same way around like conditions. The low pressure spots end up drawing tropical moisture away from the equator in those thin convergence lines, and along the way they transform into clouds that wrap around the lows just like the wind does. Delivers literally all the significant weather outside of the tropics. There, you don't need a weatherman anymore. You don't need a space weatherman either. Places like spaceweathernews.com have all the relevant charts in one place, along with some notes I keep listed on recent activity. Suspiciousobservers.org that's where you dig deeper and really get into the material. We've got shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.